Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So before we proceed with uh, <coughs> with the review on uh, radiobiology, okay, first uh, we must review uh, about the basics in radiation. Okay. So this review and the basics of radiation uh, includes uh, what is radiation and what are the types of radiation, ionizing and non-ionizing radiation, their types, their sources, their uh, effects. And for ionizing radiation, their uh, uses. Okay. So first, what is radiation? Radiation is described as any process in which energy travels through a vacuum. Okay, when we say a vacuum, it is an empty space. It is without air. Okay. So that is radiation. Or through any medium ultimately absorbed to be ultimately absorbed by another body. That is radiation. Okay. So, ano pa ba yung alam natin sa radiation? Okay. First, it is a process of energy transfer. Second, ano yung mga forms on which radiation travels? So there are two forms. We have uh, radiation travels either in waves or in particles. Okay. So the term radiation is also used to refer to the energy itself that is radiated. Okay. So radiation is a process. Radiation is the energy. Okay. So as I was saying earlier, that there are two forms of radiation, the uh, particulate radiation and the uh, waveform radiation. Okay, what are the examples of particulate radiation? So particulate radiation includes um, the alpha, beta radiation. Okay, or some call it emission or decay. Okay? So, they emit particles. Alpha emits, so, uh, alpha radiation emits alpha particles, which is a helium atom composed of two protons and two neutrons. While beta uh, particles or beta radiation emits an electron that is for beta plus, sorry, beta minus, and then a positron for beta plus, a decay or radiation. So, particle pa rin yun, diba? Electron and positron are both particles. Okay, in addition, there are several more uh, particulate radiation, such as neutron, um, neutron radiation okay so yan yung mga example ng particulate radiation okay while uh, those radiation in uh, waveforms are basically x-rays and uh, gamma rays and remember that uh, the only difference between X-ray and gamma rays is their origin. Okay, why? What is the origin of the gamma radiation? Okay, so saan, saan nag-originate ang gamma radiation? Okay. 
of class. Anybody can answer. Saan nag-originate ang gamma radiation? Saan siya na-produce? Very good sa nucleus. While X-ray, X-rays are produced or X radiation are produced in the Saan na-produce ang X-rays? In the orbital shells. Diba? So, patandaan when you encounter the question, what is the difference between X-rays and gamma rays? So, you would answer, or you should answer, the difference is their origin. Okay, so next is, what is ionizing radiation? We know that there are, in the electromagnetic spectrum, there are two classification of radiation. The non-ionizing radiation and ionizing radiation. So what are the difference between ionizing radiation and non-ionizing radiation? So the difference between the two is that uh, is the energy. Okay, the energy in each type of radiation. The energy of non-ionizing radiation are enough only to excite or to cause excitation to the uh, to the electrons in the inner uh, orbital shell while the energy of ionizing radiation or uh, ionizing radiation photons are not only capable of excitation but also capable of ejecting the uh, inner shell electron thus producing X-radiation. Yung energy. Sa energy sila nagkakatalo. Kaya nga, uh, kung babalikan natin yung uh, ating lesson when it comes to the electromagnetic spectrum, diba? uh, the, the only effect of uh, non-ionizing radiation in the body is thermal elevation or produce, it produces heat while, non, while ionizing radiation not only produces heat but also produces harmful effects. Okay, so in this, in this slide, ionizing radiation consists of subatomic particles or electromagnetic waves that are energetic enough to detach electrons from atoms or molecules, thus producing ions. Okay. So, yun yung definition ng ionizing radiation. So, kung mapapansin nyo, uh, binanggit dito na uh, either subatomic particles or particulate radiation or those radiation in waveform. Okay? So, ayan. So, types of ionizing radiation. Uh, yun nga sinabi ko kanina. Uh, electromagnetic waveform and particulate. So, alpha, beta, proton, neutrons, positron, uh, electron. Okay? Then, gamma rays and x-rays. So, alpha particles. Okay? So, ayan. Uh, katulad din ng binanggit ko are uh, helium atom so uh, pag nag uh, digest yung alpha particle sa isang atom so dalawang proton and dalawang neutron so siya ay isang helium atom okay 
then beta particle naman so siya ay nagproproduce ng electron and positron okay then proton so um, yung uh, definition naman niya is uh, is a positively charged particle okay so it is also used in some uh, treatment some of the radiation therapy treatment proton okay while neutrons neutrons are normally used in uh, the industrial side of uh, nuclear energy okay. so some medical application ng uh, uh, particulate radiation neutrons are not used so uh, electromagnetic uh, radiation or wave so, uh, yun nga, binanggit natin kanina na, uh, it's either uh, gamma or x-radiation. So, they are produced okay, uh, by a changing electric or magnetic field. So, quantum of energy packet or waves. So, it is called photon and travels through a vacuum with the speed of light that is 3 times 10 to the 8 power miles per second okay so has a zero mass at rest so wala siyang mass yung x-ray and um, x-rays and gamma rays has zero mass. Unlike the alpha particle, ang, ang mass ng alpha particle is uh, 4. Then, ang mass ng uh, beta, it, it, it's either negative 1 or positive 1. Okay? So, according here, its energy determines whether it is ionizing or non-ionizing radiation. So, yun nga yung sinabi ko kanina, the only difference between the ionizing and non-ionizing radiation is its energy. Okay? So, how would you compute for the energy? So, ito yung plan, uh, ito yung uh, formula for the computation of uh, the energy. Okay. So, yan, wavelength times frequency. Okay. Then, my plot constant. Okay. So, usually, hindi naman natin na kinocompute yan. So, again, this is the uh, graphic representation of the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. So, as you can see, the longer the wavelength, the lesser the energy while the shorter the wavelength the higher the energy so Ano ba yung bumubuo sa electromagnetic spectrum? So we have the electric waves, then radio waves, then 
microwaves, then infrared, then visible light, okay, then ultraviolet rays, then after ultraviolet rays, we have the cosmic rays, and then of course the X-ray and gamma rays. Okay. So sources of ionizing radiation can either be naturally occurring or artificial or man-made sources. So naturally occurring sources includes terrestrial radionuclides, okay? So when we say terrestrial, ito yung mga radioactive nuclides that are present in our soil, in the soils, in the stones, in the rocks, okay? Then cosmic rays, okay. so from the term itself, cosmic, okay. so these rays are from the outer space, so high energy charge particles that originated from outer space, so producing a secondary particles, okay, then fly ash, ano yung fly ash? So, they are waste-containing radioactive materials emitted by coal-fired power plants. Kaya uh, maraming tumututol sa pagtatayo ng mga coal-fired coal power plants because they are emitting radioactive materials. Yung mga waste products. Yung mga, uh, syempre, when you burn coal, it produces or it uh, produces heat and it uh, heat it are converted to uh, electricity pero syempre meron siyang uh, byproduct so combustion okay when combustion occurs anong byproduct bukod sa heat syempre yung ash yung abono coal okay so Radioactivity, so it is, this is a property of uh, the nuclei of radioactive atoms or elements, okay? So radioactivity is the spontaneous decay okay? of an unstable element, okay? When... Uh, by uh, na nagko-convert siya from one element to another after emission of either alpha particles or beta particles okay, with the emission of gamma rays. Okay. In radioactivity, okay, uh, almost all emissions or decay ay accompanied ng gamma or nagproproduce ng gamma rays. Okay. So, ang kaibahan lang is yung kasama ng gamma rays na nagproproduce it's either alpha particle or alpha uh, emission or beta minus emission or beta plus emission. Okay. So, while the artificial or man-made sources syempre, nangunguna dyan yung uh, from medical uh, sources. So device such as X-ray tube for X-rays, nuclear reactor, okay, either research or power, and then linear accelerator, which produces X-rays and electrons, and then cyclotron produces radionuclides, then nuclear weapons explosion, which produces uh, fallout or radioactive fallout, 
Okay? So, ito yung mga sources ng uh, man-made or artificial sources of radiation. So, there are also other sources in the industry. So, such as uh, paints, mga uh, yung mga fire alarm or smoke detectors, meron siyang mga small amount of radionuclides na or radioactive material. Okay? So, radioactive materials are either solid, liquid, or gas. Okay? So, devices. Okay. So, ito yung mga machines na ginagamit natin sa medical field. But also, there are accelerators. Okay? So, these accelerators are regulated by the... Uh, Okay. by the PNRI okay so yung accelerator and radioactive materials are regulated by the PNRI which is under the Department of Science and Technology while the de other devices such as x-ray machines radiographic and fluoroscopic and also uh, CT including the dental x-rays are under the Center for Device Regulation, Radiation, Health, and Research of the Department of Health. Sila yung nagbibigay ng license. Kaya nga, uh, yung Nuclear Medicine Department, ang nagbibigay ng license to operate ay the Philippine Nuclear Research Institute. Okay? Malinaw dapat sa atin, or dapat, alam ng isang radtech kung uh, sino yung nagbibigay ng license to operate or anong agency yung nagbibigay ng license to operate when it comes to the different modalities that we are using. Okay. So for X-ray machines, uh, CT, okay. uh, ano pa, uh, mga line-up, mga Tomotherapy, yan. They are all uh, under the CDRRHR. Okay? While the nuclear medicine machine, the PET, the uh, PET and SPEC, so they are uh, under the Philippine Nuclear Research Institute. Okay. So, bakit ang nuclear medicine at ang SPEC or PET ay under ng PNRI? Because these machines uses or are used to detect uh, radioactive substances or radiopharmaceuticals inside the body of the patient. So, gumagamit ng radioactive materials. That's why they are under the Philippine Nuclear Research Institute. So, x-rays and their uses. So, imaging in the industry. So, sa industry, there are many uses. Katulad nung pinanggit ni... Uh, ni Ma'am uh, Agnet Peralta during the webinar ng TUB. So there are many uses for uh, x-rays in the industry. So yung palang pag uh, scan ng mga luggages or ng mga container vans ah, sorry, hindi pala container vans. Yung mga cargo containers sa mga uh, na dumadaan sa customs. So they are uh, they are just some of the examples of the uses. Then in, of course, in medicine, so imaging is not limited to medicine. 
Okay? Uh, X-rays are also used in veterinary medicine and dentistry. Okay? Treatment of cancer. Okay? Then, determination of composition of materials for research purposes or anti-crime. So, dito papasok yung forensic radiology. Okay. If you uh, kung hindi nyo uh, alaman that uh, in other countries okay, uh, there uh, may mga red, uh, radiologic technologies na tinatawag na coroner. Okay, coroner. Uh, sila ay part ng autopsy team. Okay? Ano yung ginagawa nila? They measure uh, the different uh, organs or uh, anatomic uh, parts of the disease. Okay? Yung mga namatay. Okay? Like uh, bone sa bone. Okay? Uh, they can identify kung ilan taon na approximately yung uh, yung bone or yung uh, mga mga uh, ngipin okay so and they are used in uh, anti crime purposes so yung ay ba uh, 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 ibang bansa uh, when uh, when someone dies of a crime, so part ng autopsy yung sinisitis scan ang whole body, tinitingnan mabuti, okay, by CT scan, so syempre, during the CT scan, they are not limited na to uh, radiation exposure because the client or the one undergoing the procedure is already dead, okay, so, they are using the maximum uh, and optimum ways to produce the uh, most uh, uh, or high level quality image. Okay, so, and medical x-ray device, also radiology, so radiography, mga, kung mapapansin yung luma, yung uh, X-ray machine. So, uh, mapapansin nyo naman sa control panel kung ang X-ray machine ba ay luma or bago. So, katulad nung sa ating X-ray lab, so yung, yung ating X-ray machine ay bago pero luma. Okay? Kasi ang control panel pa rin niya ay gumagamit ng dials. Okay, unlike sa mga new uh, machines na ngayon na digital na yung uh, control panel. Okay, so CR. Okay, so any operator of the CR must wear lead gown or apron. Plus, lead goggles, okay? And of course, hindi pwedeng hindi gagamit ng film, uh, ng, ng dosimetry badge, ng personal, uh, personal dosimetry badge, okay? Para ma-monitor yung radiation dose na natatanggap ng mga o ng uh, operator ng CRM fluoroscopy. Okay, so CT scan, X-ray dip, uh, diffractometer. Okay. So ito ay ginagamit sa uh, industry. Okay. So yung glass na yan, yung sa door, ay leaded glass. Okay. 
So these uh, diffractometer are used in research. Okay? So ito naman ay totally closed. Hindi nyo makikita ko ano nasa loob. When the, the process is undergoing. Okay. Now we proceed to the effects of ionizing radiation. So when we discuss radiobiology later, so dadaanan uli natin tong effects ng ionizing radiation. Okay. So there are two types of effects of ionizing radiation. So the first one is deterministic. So maraming nalilito dito. Okay? Kaya dapat uh, ngayon pa lang is mawala na sa uh, mawala na kayo sa kalituhan kung ano ba yung deterministic at ano ba yung stochastic. Okay. So deterministic sasabi dito ay may ay merong existence ng dose threshold. So meron siyang threshold tre, uh, dose threshold value. Okay? So ano ang ibig sabihin noon? Ibig sabihin hangga't hindi lumalampas yung dose yung dose na nare-receive ng patient or ng isang particular na tao doon sa threshold so there will uh, hindi magmamanifest yung hindi magmamanifest yung effect however when the threshold is rich so there will be effects. Okay? So let's say, na-reach yung uh, 10 gray. Let's say the, the threshold is 10 milligray. Lumampas dun yung dose na na-receive nung Pasyente. Okay. So, the moment that the dose exceeded the threshold, magmamanifest ngayon yung effect. Ano yung mga uh, effect na pwedeng mangyari? Okay. Example ng effects na, na deterministic effects are cataracts, skin injuries, infertility, hair loss or epilation, okay, and death for extremely high doses. Okay. So from the term deterministic, ibig sabihin, na determine na, na, na determine na, na when a particular dose reach a certain threshold, it is determined that it will produce mani effects, manifestations, physical manifestations or effects. Okay? So, naka-note dito, with interventional radiology, deterministic effects in patients and the interventionist had been documented. So, ito yung mga example ng deterministic effects. So, deterministic effects are also called early effects. Okay. So, early appearance ng effects ng radiation from days to weeks, excluding cataract. Kasi yung cataract, it uh, may develop for uh, some time. Mas matagal kaysa sa ibang effects or early effects. Okay? Existence of a dose threshold, yun yung sinabi natin kanina. Okay? 
and there is a specific uh, a specific threshold for particular effects okay below those threshold no effect diba? sabi natin kapag uh, hindi lumampas doon sa uh, those threshold or doon sa those limit so walang effect na mangyayari and above the threshold so the severity of the effect depends or depends on the level of the radiation dose big sabihin the higher the radiation dose received by a person the more severe the effect on the human body okay so kung yung nakikita nyo yan ay radiation burn okay okay so exposure tingnan nyo ha exposure of 5 to 10 seconds so nag appear lang yung wound after 25 days yan provided that the threshold or the dose the dose uh, exceeded the threshold see yan radiation burn yan okay now we proceed to the second type of uh, the effect of ionizing radiation so stochastic So in the stochastic effects, okay, we assume to have a linear dose response relationship with no threshold. So ano ibig sabihin? Okay. Ibig sabihin gaano man kaliit yung dose na nare-receive natin, okay? It may produce an effect a biological effect on the body. Okay. Wala siyang threshold. Kasi nga, sabi dito, the higher the dose, the higher the risk of getting the disease or an effect of radiation. Okay. So, ano yung example? Cancer. Due to the mutation of cells of the exposed individuals. Okay, another effects are hereditary effects. So, due to the mutation in the genetic material of sex cells of parents that are transmitted to progeny or to the uh, descendant. descendant. Okay? okay? For your assignment, Okay, for your assignment, ipopost ko sa LMS. Okay, so I want you to define, explain, differentiate probab probabilistic effects to non-probabilistic effects. Okay, so another, there, there are sets of terms. Okay, na ginagamit pa rin sa, uh, ginagamit din sa effects of non-ionizing radiation. Probabilistic effects and non-probabilistic effects. Okay, so I want you to explain that in your own words. So kasi ngayon, uh, uh, you have to explain it in your own words and not just copy-paste. See, in a uh, few weeks ago, we had a seminar on how to use uh, the Turnitin, how to check the plagiarism in the documents submitted by the students in the new LMS. So we, we are told that we should use Turnitin sa mga... Uh, 
activities na pinapasa ng mga student. So, simple lang naman yung hiningi ko. Differentiate and explain. Uh, ano ba yung pagkakaiba ng probabilistic and non-probabilistic effects? And ano yung relationship nila sa deterministic and stochastic? Alin ba yung uh, katugma nila sa stochastic and deterministic? Now, we proceed to okay, Bago tayo mag-proceed to Non-ionizing radiation okay, Okay, so this uh, presentation is uh, from the International Agency or International Atomic Energy Agency. Okay, so it shows the biological effects of ionizing radiation. So we have the deterministic and stochastic. Okay. Okay. Again, when we say deterministic, it is uh, early effects and big threshold. Then stochastic, non-threshold, and long-term effects okay, or late effects. Okay. So, ayan. Deterministic threshold or non stochastic so again uh, meron threshold okay when the dose is below the threshold value there will be no effect observable okay so the severity of the effect increases with the dose okay. a large number of cells are involved so kung makikita nyo Radiation injury from a industrial source. Diba? Kinain na yung laman. Halos makita na yung bone. So, ganyan kalala yung uh, pwede, na, pwede nating makuha ang injury. Kapag hindi tayo mag-iingat. In using uh, those machines that produces radiation. Okay. So, pwedeng hindi sa atin mangyari, pwedeng sa pasyente. So, that's why we are studying radiobiology and radiation protection. Okay. Kasi dapat ang isang radek hindi mawawala sa kanyang isipan the uh, radiation may cause biological effects. Okay. When we say biological effects, okay, it is not necessarily harmful effects. Okay. Maring uh, hindi harmful effect yung makos ng radiation dose pero kapag na-reach yung certain limit of course it will cause injury or harmful effects. Kaya nga dapat uh, maingat tayo sa 
paggamit ng radiation. Kaya yung mga naririnig nyo sa mga tech na uh, susunugin, susunugin kita, uh, susunugin yung x-ray ng mga pasyente na mayayabang or mga uh, arugante. So, joke lang yon Ang totoo, hindi naman talaga nila tinataasan yung dose. Okay? Dahil uh, lahat naman ng RATTEC ay nag-aaral ng radiobiology and radiation protection. And it is part of the code of ethics ng RATTEC na uh, to safeguard or to protect the patient against unnecessary exposure to radiation. Okay. So, ito yung mga doses. Okay? So, 2 to 10 gray. Okay? For a person to develop cataract. Okay? Then, permanent sterility meaning pagkabaog okay for males it is 3.5 to 6 gray okay for females it is 2.5 to 6 gray and for temporary sterility ang mga males ay 0 0.15 gray while Females ay uh, 0.6 gray. Okay. So, kung titingnan nyo dun sa temporary sterility, so bakit kaya mas maliit yung threshold sa males compared sa females? Bakit kaya? Ba't kaya mas mababa yung threshold sa temporary sterility for males compared sa females? Ang laki o. Oh. Ang difference niya is 0.5 gray. So, anybody who has uh, an idea why the threshold is much lesser in males than in females. Bakit kaya? Diyan pa ba kayo? Gising pa ba kayo? So, sino may sagot? Ayan, try na ko. Sige. Kailin ko po, kaya mas maano yung sa lalaki, mas mataas yung threshold. Mas mababa, hindi mas mataas. Mas mababa ko pala. Kasi... Mas, ano po, <laughs> Kasi, o, oh, sa mga lalaki, o, oh, dapat alam nyo kasi, tayo yung ano mas mababa ang threshold bakit kaya 
Remember, ha, that is sterility. Okay? When we say sterility, pagiging baog. Incapable of producing offspring. So, bakit? Temporary lang naman. Pero, nonetheless, ang laki kasi nung difference. Okay? Unlike sa permanent sterility, yung range, halos hindi naman nagkakalayo. Hanggang 6 gray. So, ano ne? Wala sa sagot. Isipin mabuti. Oh. Sige, try mo. <laughs> Anong mas expose? Ano? Ano yun? Ano ba klasik sagot yun para kasi Duterte? Yung ano, yung kwan, yung ganun. Ano ba tinutukoy mo? Nawala na. Hindi na siya sumagot. Jello. Nandito ka? Okay. Oh, sa palagay mo, bakit? Sir, ano po? Ang kape is kape ng babae. Di ba po may Monthly period. Opo. And siyempre sa babae is kape ng babae. Nakakaanin mo sa kanila. Yung parang ano siya. Mas mataas ang threshold ng female Opo, sir. compared Opo. sa male sa temporary sterility. So, bakit mas mababa yung sa male? Sir, gawa po yun sa ano? Yung male po kasi is ano? Nalabas. So, po, hindi po nagaano ng yung sa babae lang sa yung dugo. Di ba yung nagaan sila ng ano? Malakas! Uh, Tingnan mo ha, when we say threshold, ito yung value ng radiation dose na kung saan magkakaroon na agad ng effect. Pag lumampas ka sa threshold, or ma-reach mo yung threshold, magmamanifest yung biological effect. So sabi dito sa data, pag sa male, umabot yung radiation dose ng point 15 gray siya ay magkakaroon ng temporary sterility. 0.15 gray, ha? While female naman, magkakaroon ng temporary sterility kapag naabot niya yung radiation dose na 0.6 gray. So, alin ba ang mas malaki? 0.15 o 0.6? Point six is point sixty. So alin na mas malaki? Alin na mas malaki? Point six or point six point six zero, di ba? 
compared sa 0.15. So, anong reason? So, the reason is the anatomical structure. Anatomical structure ng males. Tama naman yung sagot kanina. Kaso, yung ano, ano ba yung ano? Batang hirap sabihin. Di ba? Kasi po, nasa labas po kasi yung gonads ng lalaki. Gonads! Di ba? Kung ayaw mo sabihin ng nasa labas po kasi yung testis, oh, di, you should use gonads. Diba? So yun yung isa sa reason kung bakit uh, pagdating sa temporary sterility, mas mababa ang threshold ng male compared sa female. Kasi yung gonads ng male ay nasa labas or yung testis. While the uh, the ovaries of female are within their body. Diba? Okay. So next. Okay. Stochastic. Non-threshold. Stochastic effects. Non-threshold. So walang Threshold, katulad nung binanggit natin kanina. Wala siyang threshold. So, any radiation dose, any amount of radiation dose may, may ha, may produce radiation or biological effects. Okay. The probability of the effect increases with the dose. The higher the dose, the higher the probability that there will be a biological effect. Okay? Generally occurs with a single cell. Unlike sa deterministic, that occurs with many cells. Okay, example ng stochastic effects are cancer and genetic effects. Okay. Nakuha ba yung difference between deterministic and stochastic? Nakuha ba? Hello? Nandiyan po kayo? Wala yata kayo dyan eh. Ginagawa nyo. Nakuha ba yung pagkakaiba ng stochastic and deterministic? Wala hindi kayo nasagot. Hindi kayo nasagot, mag-quiz tayo after ng meeting. Okay, so, ito yung ibang effects, pero after discuss natin yan sa mga susunod na So, balikan natin yung non-ionizing okay. So, non-ionizing radiation refers to any type of radiation 
that does not carry enough energy to remove an electron from an atom or molecule. Okay. So types of non-ionizing radiation. Okay. So we have visible light, okay. ultraviolet radiation, infrared radiation, laser radiation, okay. radio frequency, and microwave radiation. And then, okay, pinaka mababa ay electromagnet, yung low frequency electromagnetic fields or electric electric waves. Okay. Okay. So, dito, technically, hindi sinasama yung ultrasound sa uh, non-ionizing radiation. Kasi siya ay uh, different uh, different yung kanyang uh, production. Okay? Siya ay mechanical energy. Okay? Because it is produced to the piezoelectric crystals na ginagamit. But to pressure. So sources of non-ionizing radiation so yan, electric power lines, electric cables, devices, mobile phones, cell sites, telecommunications, facilities, so MRI machines, ultrasound machines, laser sources, okay, ultraviolet and infrared lights. Of course, yung ating mga white lights, mga fluorescent natin, LED. So they are all sources of non-ionizing radiation. Okay. Yung mga, uh, mga laptops, computers, okay, mga gadgets, okay. they are all sources of non-ionizing radiation. So question, Can non-ionizing radiation produce cancer? Pwede gamitin yung mic. Pwede nga gamitin yung mic sa pagsagot. No. How about the others? Yung cellphone nyo ba? O pwede ba kayong magkaroon ng cancer sa cellphone? Dahil lang sa cellphone nyo? Diba? Pwede ba kayong magkaroon ng cancer? Dahil sa cellphone? Sa paggamit ng computer? Shoot na kayo. Shoot na kayo dyan. Matagal bago magkaroon. Okay. So, technically speaking, there are different hazards that non-ionizing radiation have compared with ionizing radiation. Okay? So, example, uh, the only uh, non-ionizing radiation that can produce cancer is ultraviolet rays. Okay? Ultraviolet rays lang pwede mag 
produce. However, the cancer, the type of cancer that ultraviolet rays can produce are only superficial. Okay, superficial. So, when we say superficial, so, siya ay hanggang skin level only. So, ultraviolet rays can produce skin cancer. Of course, kapag yung dose niya ay mataas. Okay. So, remember that ultraviolet rays, okay, ay according to sa ultramagnet, uh, sa electromagnetic spectrum, yung kalahati ng ultraviolet rays are considered ionizing. Pero yung kalahati ay non-ionizing. Pero in the technical sense, kinaklasify pa rin natin ang ultraviolet rays as non-ionizing. However, it can produce cancer, skin cancer, okay? And the rest of the non-ionizing radiation cannot produce cancer, but they can produce other biological effects. Example, electric power lines, diba? electric waves. So, ano pwedeng injury na matamo mo sa electric waves? You can get electrocuted, di ba? Makukuryente ka. Okay. Sa cellphones, ano yung other uh, possible biological effects? So, paggamit ng cellphones, okay? So, there are studies that said that uh, use of cellphones or smartphones particularly lalo na paggabi can cause uh, can cause vision impairment panlalabo ng mata okay it can also cause uh, disruption of the body's homeostasis okay ano pa uh, how about the radio frequency waves okay so, radio frequency waves, microwaves, infrared. So, basically, uh, ang isang, ang effect lang nila normally ay uh, heat. Okay. Pag masyado mataas yung infrared or microwave or RF waves, heat yung naproproduce. Same goes with the MRI machine. Kaya nga yung MRI machine natin, eh, ano bang meron na MRI machine? The radio frequency waves. Diba? When you are inside the Faraday cage or the MRI room, sobrang lamig. Pero kapag ikaw yung pasyente at nasuot ka doon sa uh, gantry, okay, at nagkumpisa ng gumalaw yung magnet magproduce ng radio frequency okay mainit dun sa mismong butas ng country okay malamig sa labas pero ikaw na pasyente habang nandun ka sa loob okay makakaramdam ka ng heat okay hindi naman na sobrang init pero yung heat na yun will cause uh, will almost cause you to perspire. Okay? Then, uh, laser. Of course, laser. Kapag tinutok mo sa mata, hazard yun. Can cause blindness, di ba? Or other uh, vision impairment. Okay? 
So same goes with ultraviolet light. Okay? So itong mga, uh, kung napapanood kayo ng news before, nung nagumpisa yung pandemic, there are lots of people who uses uh, infrared lights to uh, disinfect, okay, to sterilize the room or rooms. Okay. So ang kamalian ng iba, ginagamit nila yung UV light while they are inside the, the room. Eh, di ba yung UV ay siya yung may shortest wavelength sa lahat ng ionizing radiation, di ba? And sabi nga natin, it can produce skin cancer. Okay. Ultraviolet rays can also produce cataracts. Okay. And of course, yung uh, it can produce swelling and edema or burns radiation burns also kasi nga siya ay uh, though hindi nga hindi siya capable mag eject ng uh, electron or to cause ionization but still short yung wavelength niya and can, can cause uh, certain biological effects that are uh, that may be caused also by na by ionizing radiation. Okay? Pero syempre, hindi ka naman mababaw sa ultraviolet rays. Okay, so yan yung mga example ng mga sources. Okay? So, yan, MRI machine. Sobrang in, hindi naman sobrang init. Mainit sa loob due to the radio frequency and magnet. Laser, very dangerous to our uh, vision. And of course, the higher energy laser are also dangerous to uh, the skin. It can cause burns. Diba? Kaya nga, uh, yung mga laser engraving. So, high energy laser yon, which can uh, cause uh, burning of uh, certain materials. And of course, the UV light and infrared lights or visible lights. Okay. So, ito yung mga major effects of the ionizing radiation. Okay? As you can see sa ultraviolet, merong photokeratitis, so sa mata pa rin yan. Okay? Cataracts, eye cancer, sunburn, premature aging, skin cancer. Okay? Poor ultrasound at high uh, intensities, cavitation and heating. Okay? Then, for varying electric and magnetic fields. So, electrical coupling and electrofusion. So, pag, pwede ang maoriente. Okay. For lasers, intense heat. Blinding if I is heat. So, same. Yung uh, radio frequency and microwave. Radiation I same with the uh, electric and magnetic fields. Electrical coupling plus heat. Okay? So, yan lang yung mga major effects. Okay?
Okay. Hmm. Nabawasan kayo. And now we proceed to the review on radiobiology. Okay. For this session, okay. so ito objectives natin. So discuss the cell theory of human biology. Okay. List and describe the molecular composition of the body. Then explain the parts and function of the human cell. So brief, ano lang to, brief review. Then after this, uh, next meeting we will be discussing the uh, cell division. So radiobiology is the study of the effects of ionizing radiation on biologic tissues. Okay? Or in the human body. Okay? So uh, at each stage, it is possible to repair radiation damage and recover. Okay. So, yan, tatandaan natin na pwede magkaroon ng repair in the uh, molecular level. Okay. However, uh, repair of radiation damage cannot guarantee of uh, the the cell being repaired or the uh, part being repaired ay babalik sa normal. Okay? So, uh, madidiscuss natin yan in the uh, in, in the later discussion when it comes to the effects in the uh, DNA. So, human radiation response. Okay. So, ang effect ng radiation sa tao ay nangyayari in the atomic level. Okay? In the molecular level. Okay. So, when an atom is ionized, its chemical binding properties change. Diba? When and when a stable atom becomes unstable, of course, there are changes that will happen in their chemical properties. Then, uh, deposited energy can produce a molecular change. And the consequence for which can be measurable if the molecule involved is critical. So, there are different molecules in the human body or human tissues. So later, isa-isayin natin kung ano yung mga molecule na yun. Okay. So this is a representation of the sequence of events okay, after radiation exposure of humans. So they can lead to different uh, human response or human body response at kung ano yung kanilang patutungan. So, exposure okay radiation exposure so magkakaroon ng ionization and excitation so it can be either direct effect or indirect effect by interaction with water or radiolo um, radiolysis. Okay. Then, there will be a molecular alteration. Kasi nga, it is in the molecular level that um, energies are, dip are deposited. Okay. So, in the molecular level, so, okay, uh, magkaroon ng enzymatic repair. However, 
Okay? Uh, dapat natin tandaan okay, na ang target molecule ng radiation is the DNA. Yan. Dapat lagi nating tatandaan yon. DNA is the target molecule okay, for radiation exposure. Okay. It can produce biochemical lesion. Okay. And this biochemical lesion okay, can cause cell death. Okay. So, pwede rin pwede rin siyang mag-recover from sublethal damage. Okay. Kapag nag-recover siya from sublethal damage, so, hintayin lang yung repair and recovery. Pero, kung siya ay magtuloy sa cell death, so, it can produce deterministic effects. Okay. Either death, organ dysfunction, tissue damages. So, any uh, deterministic effects pwedeng sumulpot. So, yung other possible scenario. Okay? So, biochemical lesion again. Okay? Mag-recover siya from sublethal damage. Okay? Sabi ko nga kanina, pwede siyang hindi na bumalik sa pagiging normal. Okay? And dahil yung kahit siya ay nag-recover na, na-repair na from sublethal damage, okay? Yung lesion can, okay? Can become stochastic effects. The leukemia, cancer, tissue damage. Okay? Pwede siyang dumiretso agad sa stochastic effect. Okay. Then, yung biochemical lesion after recovering from sublethal damage, okay, pwede siyang mag-cause din ng cell death. Okay. Cell death, yan ay uh, function. Function yan ng uh, human body. Yung tinatawag na apoptosis. Okay, apoptosis. So, apoptosis is a programmable uh, cell death. So, yun yung madaling tandaan. Programmable cell death, ibig sabihin, pinoprogram na ating system, na ating katawan, that uh, this certain cell or number of cells ay mamatay at ma-recycle. Okay? So, apoptosis ang tawag doon. Then, kahit mamatay na yung cell na may biochemical lesions, it can still produce stochastic effects. So again, stochastic effect, siya ay late effects. Okay? Kaya mayroong latent period. Then, point mutation, okay? this point mutation occurs in the uh, in the chromosomes of the DNA. Okay. So, there can be possible repair kung ma-damage yung or kung magkaroon ng mutation. However, again, repair cannot guarantee the 100% return to normal and therefore, it can produce genetic damage. Okay. So again, uh, pinapakita lang dito na there can have a repair and recovery in certain stages 
ng uh, response ng katawan ng tao sa radiation exposure. Okay? So, yan. At yung sinabi ko, babalikan natin yung types of effects. So, deterministic effects, radiation response increases in severity with increasing radiation dose. Okay. So, radiation response occurs within minutes or days after radiation exposure. Again, this type of effect deterministic is with threshold. Okay. Then, the stochastic effect the incidence of the radiation response increases with increasing radiation dose. Okay. So when we say incidence, okay, uh, it can be uh, translated into frequency of radiation response. Then radiation response, uh, that is not observable for six months or longer after radiation exposure. So stochastic effects are late effects. Okay. So these are the uh, list of human responses to ionizing radiation and further divided into deterministic effects, stochastic effects, and fetal, uh, fatal fatal effects. Okay? So, acute radiation syndrome or ARS. Okay? So, this acute radiation syndrome have different stages. The hematologic syndrome is the first stage. Okay? Then, the second stage is the gastrointestinal syndrome. Okay? And then, the final stage of the acute radiation syndrome is the Central Nervous System Syndrome. Okay. So each of these syndrome have a different radiation threshold, radiation dose threshold. Okay. And of course, each of these stages of the syndrome have different uh, symptoms, signs and symptoms. Okay. As you can see in their uh, in their title, their names, okay. So it is related to that particular organ system. Okay, so like hematologic syndrome, so they are related to the blood. Then gastrointestinal related to the GI tract, and of course central nervous system related to central nervous system. Okay. Then another deterministic effect are local tissue damage. Okay. The skin, gonads, and extremities. Then the hematologic depression and cytogenic damage. So these are the deterministic effects of radiation on humans. Okay. Next, these are the stochastic effects naman of, human, of radiation in humans. So, leukemia and other malignant diseases such as bone cancer, lung cancer, and breast cancer. So, local tissue damage okay, includes skin, gonads, and eyes. So, in comparison dun sa uh, deterministic walang eyes pero may extremities dito sa stochastic merong eyes okay, but walang extremities then shortening of lifespan then the genetic damage okay, cytogenic uh, cytogenetic damage, doubling of dose, and genetically significant dose. 
So, ito yung mga uh, stochastic effects. Okay, so, later, uh, didiscuss natin yung iba sa kanila ng mas malalim. Bibigyan natin sila ng mga threshold or doses. Then, the effects on fetal irradiation. So, prenatal death, neonatal death, congenital malformation, okay? childhood malignancy, or diminished growth and development. So, what is the difference between prenatal and neonatal death? What is the difference between prenatal and neonatal death? Fourth year. Hello, are you there? Ano pagkakaiba nila? Yuhu! What is the difference between prenatal and neonatal? Okay. Pag neonatal. Very good. Okay. So, syempre, medical term yan. Dapat alam natin yan. Diba? Prenatal meaning before giving birth. Neonatal bagong uh, anak. So, tama, uh, prenatal, the uh, child, the unborn child is still in the womb of the mother, while neonatal, uh, the child is already born or out of the womb. So, no. prenatal na matay sa loob ng uterus, while neonatal namatay siya, na, na, na ipanganak na siya. Then, composition of the body. So, it is important for us to know uh, what composes our body. So, the atomic composition of the body determines the character and degree of radiation interaction. And also, the molecular and tissue composition defines the nature of radiation response. Okay. So again, the atomic composition ng body determines the character or how the body interacts with radiation. Okay. So kaya nga, uh, diba, we have different interaction ng body or ng radiation sa body. Ba? There are uh, radiation that are absorbed. There are radiation that are uh, attenuated. There are some that uh, just pass through the body. So it depends on the atomic composition of the body. Yung interaction between the body and radiation. Yung molecular and tissue composition naman, it uh, gives us or it defines the nature of radiation response. Sila yung uh, nagbibigay kung papaano kung papaano uh, gagalaw or paano magre-react yung ating body, yung ating katawan 
sa radiation. Okay? So, magkaiba yun ha. Magkaiba yung atomic composition sa molecular and tissue composition. So, this is the table for the atomic composition of the body. As you can see, when we say atomic composition, okay, ano napapansin nyo? Okay, they are all elements. Okay, 60% hydrogen, 25.7% oxygen, 10.7% carbon, 2.4 nitrogen, 0.2 calcium, 0.1% phosphorus, 0.1% sulfur, and 0.8% trace elements. Okay, so we will continue uh, the discussion next meeting. Nag-post na si Dean ng uh, link for the meeting. Okay, so let us uh, continue next meeting with the uh, discussion of the cell theory. Okay. So, pwede na tayong, or pwede na kayong pumunta doon sa uh, Google link ni Dean for the meeting. Okay? Ay, wait. Mag-check muna ako na attendance. Alcance. Alday. Aquino, Balasabas, Barinho, Luada, Chan, Landria, Daco, Dibilia, Ormaran, Garcia, Present Go. Present po. Magsino. Present po. Muyko. Present po. Nuida. Present po. Orian. Present po. Ornedo. Present po. Vaselis. Present po. Recinto. Present po. Salvatierra. Present po. Sarte Silos Tapar Trevino Velasquez Vertera Villa Dami na wala Okay So, sige, lipat na tayo dun sa kabilang Google Room. Well, okay, thank you.